<laughs> Welcome everybody to the uh, Rust Industrial Conference 2018. Uh, this is um, Mirko. The, my name is Thilo Zimmermann. I'm the chair of today and uh, I give the stage to Mirko. Thank you, Thilo. Thank you everybody for taking the time to travel to despite being the end of the year, lots of projects that you're probably closing, take some time, okay? So this year, even with the video streaming, so uh, I'm an emotion myself. So do we get the slides? Uh, there we go, perfect. Again, welcome to Ross Industrial Conference. Just uh, a few short remarks before we start. I would typically give a longer talk telling you what's all about uh, Ross, Ross Industrial, and the various actions uh, that we perform to further the state of open source platforms uh, and many other things revolving around software for industrial robotics and automation. But since uh, this has been going on for quite some time, so it's probably a familiar concept, familiar initiative to most of you, and more importantly, since we have uh, many uh, people and organizations which will present during the three days uh, some of these actions uh, that are furthering uh, the, um, yeah, the initiative under many aspects, uh, I will just give some initial thoughts uh, and leave it to them to get into the details those who deserve the spot. So, the what, if you wish. The initial event, uh, now six years ago, was uh, Ross Industrial, an enabler for industrial robotics, question mark. Well, we can consider it an enabler, in terms uh, very concretely of a software platform for industrial robotics and automation. I'd like to say adopted and ideally co-developed co by its stakeholders. Uh, some of the talks in the next days, uh, actually today as well, and then tomorrow and the first day we'll touch upon this uh, co-development, how you can get involved, how some of you, be it uh, hardware OEMs, uh, be it system integrators, are co-developing with us. It's also the initiative to pursue this goal, a lot of dissemination, outreach. Um, I have the pleasure of being invited uh, sometimes to just tell uh, user groups, say in uh, aerospace manufacturing, uh, what does that mean to do things uh, with this open IP policy that uh, sometimes is uh, instantiated in open source? So pushing uh, this also means uh, taking care of those aspects that are non-technical, if you wish, but deserve uh, as much attention. And then something that I came to think more recently is that maybe it's a way to understand, it's an exercise to understand how to use open source, possibly rethink practices and business models, if you follow the business also by going to, to trade fairs, you've seen uh, quite a few new actors having entered this business, and uh, you will meet them during these days. We have quite a few talks from, uh, say, unusual players for industrial robotics and automation. There's quite a lot going on, and I think that this is an excellent exercise for you to understand, uh, okay, where do I position myself as a company or as an organization which does robotics and automation? So when? So the surrounding context matters, as I always uh, like to think. So take those two things, and I keep thinking that that's an excellent example, right? Because those two things uh, have been made, uh, made by the same company. The idea is kind of similar. It's just that the implementation went 14 years apart. In the first case, you didn't have uh, internet or wireless internet. Uh, so the usefulness of that device was kind of limited. It was also, yeah, sort of portable, but not really pocketable battery, and so forth. So the idea is very similar, but maybe the context was not there. Second try, same company, enormous success. So you, again, go around uh, the world and I started taking more and more pictures on purpose. This time, every, find, every time I would find a reference to a ROS SDK, to ROS compatibility, and it would pop up more and more often. And uh, you know, as recently as uh, two weeks ago, and again, you find it appearing a bit on service robots, uh, on industrial robots, on sensors, uh, on full cells, uh, or from IT players saying, oh, we also do it uh, on our own platform. So maybe the time is now. Uh, earlier this year at our twin event in North America, I had the pleasure to listen to this gentleman from the Boeing company, Dr. Philip Freeman, who actually came up with a very nice expression. Feels like we're at an amazing tipping point, maybe like Linux in 1993, something is happening. So if that was the what and when, maybe the why. Again, I think it's a good exercise to understand open source and open hardware, rethink your practices, business models. Maybe they're good as they are, or maybe you know, they can use some reshake. Again, you go around and you see things that maybe are weak signals right now. So open hardware to do things that maybe you would typically buy a much more expensive uh, piece of hardware to do. 
And then you see also things like, um, hmm, OK, all of a sudden I have easy access to platforms uh, that were not really a thing until recently. Um, what does that mean? Maybe this uh, makes you rethink where your um, value proposition lies. So maybe it's not the design of the hardware itself, but I know maybe it's the services on top of it. Um, maybe there is a reversal of your points of sale. Maybe, as you'll hear tomorrow, um, the free robot features, like uh, you know, building a map that once were thought to be the core IP that you should defend, no, they're free because you want to sell commodities, like compute and storage. So maybe, talking about context, this platform, which is building up, and uh, as I showed you, it's becoming uh, supported by uh, OEMs that, as you'll hear during these days, uh, is being used for uh, concrete application as being uh, further in terms of uh, how good you can prove it to be, is the emerging suitable context. Um, actually, talking of uh, suitable context again very recently, and here I added the emphasis. So if you've been around for a long time, you remember 2007, the first Microsoft Robot Studio that didn't fly, right? But now Microsoft gets back into robotics. Maybe now the context is right, like the 14 or so part example. So the last thing, the VU. So first of all, we have uh, to thank all our members around the world in this initiative, the Ross Industrial Consortium who by paying uh, also uh, an yearly fee that very practically allow us to run this kind of initiatives, uh, believe and uh, fund this kind of developments. Kudos to them. We're also blessed uh, to have uh, support from public agencies. Rosen, of which you'll hear today about, uh, has been instrumental in the last two years uh, to advance uh, the status quo, I would say, of Russian industry in Europe, also by very practical things like training people, uh, by um, now doing the stewarding of projects that have been co-funded. At IP, we're also particularly grateful to our local government, uh, federal government, uh, for another project, which has uh, Ross Industrial and Ross uh, as a big component. And I would also like to thank uh, my colleagues who uh, accompany us uh, in this uh, uh, open source uh, exercise uh, and adventure, if you wish. Thanks a lot. <laughs>